Hi, I'm Dave Roberts and you join me here today on the Rotherwa section of the River Wye controlled by Docklow Pools and today we're going to do some pike fishing. At this time of year many other species, barbel, chub, roach, days, they tend to slow down and uh, they're hard to catch but pike fishing when it's cold can be excellent so it's the one species I always look forward to at this time of year. This stretch here at the Rotherwus is, um, is brilliant for pike. I've caught some massive pike. We've had them up to 22 pounds this season um, and lots, lots of fish as well. Not just, not just big fish, there's some smaller fish. And generally, you get some sport down here. The access to this stretch is brilliant. You've got a nice secure car park. You can walk down to the riverbank. There's no hills or uneven ground. It's just a nice walk all the way along the stretch. So I can bring my rods and just wander along and explore the whole river. It's a fantastic stretch. We're going to have a look now at some of the equipment we're going to use for today's pike fishing. So the equipment you need for pike fishing is not as complicated as it may seem. The chances are you probably, if you come to Docklow on holiday, Docklow is predominantly a carp fishery. You'll probably have a carp rod, carp reels, that sort of thing, and that's all we're using for pike fishing. This rod I'm using is a it's a two and a half pound test curve, it's a carp rod. I've got a bait runner reel with 18 pound line. It's the sort of gear you know, you'd be carrying anyway. So really it's only the terminal gear that you might need to buy. Rig wise, again, I find with pike fishing, same as most of my fishing, simplicity is best. It's literally about covering the riverbank and dropping a bait where you think there might be a pike. And that bait can be lay on the bottom, it can be suspended, you can do lots of fancy rigs, but ultimately, if you drop it on the bottom and it holds still, you'll have a chance that the pike's gonna come and pick it up. So the rig itself is quite simple. I've got a sliding float stop up the line, which I slide up to suit the depth of the water I'm fishing. I've got a sliding Zeppler pike bung, nice big visible pike bung, and that'll suspend the bait in the water. I've got a couple of slide-in bullets there, okay, and those sit against the bottom swivel, which is then on a trace with your treble hooks on, two treble hooks. Now all this you can buy, if you're uh, staying at Docklow, you can buy it from the shop there, they carry all this stuff in stock. And you don't need lots of it, you're only using one rod at a time, you're not generally losing lots of gear, so a couple of traces, a few bits of terminal tackle and that's your rod and reel setup. A few things, a few other things you need to carry with you for pike fishing. Okay, we've got our rod, reel, a good sized landing net. Again, this is a net I use for, for my pike fishing but I could use it for carp. As long as you've got a good sized net that you can get a decent sized fish, you know, these pike are big and long. I carry a little bite alarm on a bank stick I don't really need bite alarms. I think pike fishing is very visual. Uh, I like looking at the bung and watching it bob around. I'm watching it all the time, but sometimes it's, you know, it doesn't harm just to have a, a bite alarm in case you just have to step back from the water or something or a call of nature. Uh, so I can just flick that on as and when I need, but generally I'm just using it as a rod rest. Then I've got a bait, a, a bag with all my sort of general equipment in. Again, you don't need lots. Got an unhooking mat on the top there. If you're a carp fisherman, you'll have that already. Okay, so you've got your own hooking mat. And then in my bag, I've got a bag of baits, a little cool bag. We're fishing mainly dead baits on the river. So I've got a selection here. I've got some mackerel there, they're dyed reds. I've got some dead roach there. These are just Dead coarse fish, fish baits that I can put on my trace and drop into a hole somewhere and it'll sit on the bottom. And I like using natural baits if I can. It depends on the fishery rules. Different fishers have different rules. But I find, certainly on Docklow water where I can use coarse baits, a dead roach is as good as anything. It's natural to the river and pike love them. You can also buy nice cheap baits from the supermarket, any fishmongers sardines, herrings, mackerel, anything like that, you can buy your own. You don't need to spend lots of money on, on fancy baits. I've got various boxes with different, different traces in. This is just stuff you accumulate, but this sort of thing that you can buy, 
ready-made, I make my own traces, but there's nothing wrong with ready-made ones. And I say, these are all available from most shops. And the most important thing is I carry this bag and the unhooking mat and everything together. And then in the side pocket here, this is my unhooking department. I've got forceps, vitally important for unhooking these pikes, especially long handles. It keeps your hands away from the pike's mouth. But don't be mistaken thinking you need to buy lots of expensive equipment, specialist pike gear. It's basically carp gear. It's just the terminal tackle that's different. So there'll be a few bits and pieces you need of terminal tackle. Go to your tackle shop and get those. And if you've already got carp gear, you're ready to go. just about to do some uh, some more technical stuff filming we thought our fishing was over for the day and this little chap another double figure pike has uh, interrupted our session um, we're in the middle part of the day now middle of the day the sun's up we didn't expect to get a bite right now but this just proves you can never tell with pike fishing as long as you've got a bait in the water you've got a chance now what I'm going to do is show you now a little bit about the unhooking process this is where a lot of people are scared of coming pike fishing because they're worried about this part so we're going to start by first of all sussing out where the line and the hooks are because we don't want to get more tangled than we need, okay? So everything's, it's not wrapped around the fish. So all I'm going to do is just follow the pike's gill cover underneath those gill rakers, being careful, and then you'll feel there's a definite stopping point, okay? And you rest your finger, I'm using my middle finger, up against there. And then you've got complete control of this fish now. You can lift its head, the mouth automatically opens, okay? You can feel when they're tensing up and they're going to flip, so you can just hold a bit tighter. Keep an eye on it. And then it's just a case of sussing out where the hooks are. And I always try and unhook the deepest one first. Okay, we don't worry about the ones on the edge of the mouth because they're not the ones. The ones to worry about is if it's just got one a little bit deep down. Semi-barbed hooks as well. So much easier to get out. Okay, it's as simple as that. But all the time, we're in control of the fish. By holding it there, the fish, if the fish flips, I'm holding it. It's a very strong part of the pike's jaw, so you're not going to do any damage to the fish. My fingers are inside the, f the fish's mouth now, but it's not anywhere near any teeth. So I can't get cut, the fish can't get hurt, the hooks are out. Now we can get the scales out, give it a quick way, and get it back in the water. Okay, so that's the fish unhooked now. Hooks are nicely out the way. Fish is ready to go, so we're just going to give the, way, the fish a quick way and then go back, back in the water. This is where a detachable landing net head and folding landing net head comes in useful because you can just fold that over, just twist the net up like so. Scales, everything to hand, flick them on. There we go, all zeroed. Now I'll weigh the, the net afterwards. I'll just weigh that now. That's weighing 12 pounds, 14 ounces. Now I think the net's just under two pounds, so that's gonna be just about 11 pounds. So we've weighed that now. So now we take the fish down in the weigh net, down to the edge of the water, and slip her back gently. What a lovely fish at this time of day. So there you go, folks. The end of another wonderful session on the River Wye. It's about 11 a.m. now, the sun's very high in the sky, and I feel like our chance of catching another piker may be dis diminishing, so we're going to call it a day. But what a wonderful session. Two wonderful pike. The one we had this morning, a big fish, and it's no coincidence that was early and when the light wasn't, when the sun wasn't out and it was still quite cold. Those, those early morning sessions are vitally important for pike. You give yourself every chance of catching a big fish. I hope you've learned a little bit about my approaches to the river wire and realize that it's actually not that complicated and you don't need masses of expensive specialist gear. This stretch is exclusive to Doclo Pools and if, you're more if you'd like more information just visit the link below. If you feel like you'd like some guidance and you'd like to come out with me 
My information is below also. I'll see you around.